Aloha, this is Daniel Posney, and this is called Shifting Perspectives. And uh, the topic today is about uh, miscarriages and trying to become and stay pregnant. Um, but before I get into that, I just want to let you know what's going on. Uh, coming up in March, on March 10th, um, we've got uh, Call In Your Soulmate for two hours at our studio in Sedona. And it's $88 for anyone and then $44 for locals. Uh, the other thing is that I just got a request from a guy that wants to do a retreat um, March 6th through the 9th. And I do have that time available. So I'm probably going to end up doing a private retreat with him unless there's another guy or two that wants to join in on that. So that's what's going on. And then uh, I have a men's retreat already scheduled for um, June. And then another men's retreat scheduled for October. And uh, you can find out all the stuff on ultimatepotentialcoach.com. And anything that's going on at our beautiful property here called the Hummingbird House at the hummingbirdhouse.org. And we've got all of our events going on here. We just did a kirtan, which is a devotional chant. And we're talking about doing another one uh, coming up here pretty soon, too. So... Um, seems to be always something, you know, being planned for this place, which we love. All right. So first of all, before I dive into um, all the things that I've kind of learned over time, I just want to kind of put some some softness and some tenderness on this subject, because I know that, you know, I could say the smallest little tiny thing or not or nothing and really upset someone. Because it's it's a very sensitive topic, and you're you know you're going through a lot of emotions, and one little thing can just kind of hit that trigger, and kind of you know cause you to shut down and close down your heart. So I just want to just ask you just to kind of stick with me as long as you can, and see if there's anything in here that resonates that will help in some way to um, help you have a baby. Um, so. In my first marriage, um, back in the 80s, um, we had a daughter and it was like, no problem. We were we were busy partying and having a good time. And, you know, we really didn't prepare too much. I don't remember. Um, but then she was born so easily. And then uh, I think it was about a year and a half or two after that, we said, you know, let's try for another one. And we thought it was going to be no big deal. And then the pregnancy, you know, wouldn't take, it wouldn't go beyond a certain amount of time. And then, you know, she was doing uh, progesterone uh, suppositories and going to the doctor and doing all these things. But at that time, there was no work or any uh, guidance outside of the normal doctors and medicine and procedures and techniques. There was no emotional check-in. There was there was nothing that maybe that we could do that might improve the situation. And um, so we just continued on. And I think it was four, if not five uh, miscarriages, which is just so overwhelming physically and emotionally on her body. And of course, it's it's overwhelming to me too as a husband and a potential father and so it plays on both of us and it affects our relationship and, you know, you know, everything gets affected by that. So um, I want to give you a, a lot of information about things that can help um, the environment, the situation, the emotions and everything. And just kind of keeping everything in the bubble of this out of our control anyway, you know, God is the one that's kind of creating this whole thing. But there are things that we can help improve the situation and use this as a as an opportunity to clear away anything that might be in the way of that. So um, let me just go through my what I wrote on Facebook uh, about what I'm talking about today. Um, talked about that we, my wife and I, had struggled in my first marriage. <clears throat> There's a great opportunity in front of us when something like this. <clears throat> brings in so much frustration and pain. The pregnancy actually becomes a, a catalyst if we choose to see it. But normally we forget that we are involved in creating new life 
and we just want to do whatever it takes so we can just go on with our lives and get and continue on with this new journey of our life. And, you know, it can also be where um, I just want a baby. I just want a child. And this is going to help our relationship and all that kind of stuff. And we, we lose the focus of, well, shouldn't it also be that I love this person so much that uh, this is just a natural progression of our love. But what it tends to be is that it, the whole thing is about fixing the problem, doing whatever it takes to fix the problem, and then the relationship starts to suffer. So um, we put a lot of hope and power in the hands of medicine, hoping that they can overcome divine will's timing and just fix the problem. And uh, a lot of why me and why us starts to happen when you're trying to become pregnant and you look at your friends who they're like, they're doing drugs or they're, you know, alcoholics or they hate each other and they can't help but get pregnant. <laughs> and so I just, one part of that I want to say something about is that th there is no deserving. There's no deserving that you should have a child or not have a child or that you should have a healthy child or not a healthy child. There's no worthiness of you getting what you most desire. It just is. It's, it's the hardest thing to understand that things are happening and it has nothing to do with you. Your worthiness has nothing to do with this physical reality. So do your best to just kind of take that out of the equation. I know, but this person has a, such an easy time and I can't believe that it happened this way. And we've got to go, try and take all the details about all that out of there. And what you want to start focusing on is how it makes you feel. And I know it makes you feel frustrated and angry and, and all those and sad and feel like giving up and just what's the use and all that. But if you could tap into how it's making you feel and then see if you can connect where you felt that same feeling that this is all coming up. And it's so hard because I don't want to work on my emotions when I'm trying to create life when, when this is a really important thing. I don't have time to look at my emotions but actually it's the opposite is that this, this is the, the perfect time to clear the way so that your baby comes into your womb, into your environment in the most peaceful, loving, unconditional love, um, pristine space as possible. Yeah. You could have a baby in a not pristine space with a bunch of arguing and drugs and alcohol. Yeah, you can have that, but the child is going to suffer from that. So, you want to make sure that it, you can do as much as you can to make sure that that environment, which is kind of a side note to taking care of yourself and loving yourself. And, you know, so what you get to do is you get the benefit from all that. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, how to nurture the womb, uh, victim consciousness and worthiness, feminine and masculine energy roles, deserving and not deserving, and what the husband's potential uh, issues might be, uh, healing the mother role, and how people pleaser affects everything, um, speaking to the soul of the baby, and grieving loss after a miscarriage, and God's role in all of this. So um, I've spoken to a couple of those things, but um, let's see if I can expand on some of those. So the, the feminine energy, the way that I understand it is the feminine energy is like the nest and it's cultivating the nest of creation that's that's bound to happen. And uh, what's going to happen is that the, the masculine energy brings in the impulse or the that directs that energy into some form. That's the masculine. It's not the man energy. It's just the masculine going forward, doing, taking action, creating energy. But there can't really be this um, amazing creation without the feminine nurturing, protecting um, energy of uh, creating that, that sacred space for that. So when I hear women say, you know, they're doing everything and they've got this job and they've got all this responsibilities and they're working out and they're taking care of them, that's a lot of masculine energy. And you can't approach life like that you can't approach creating life like that I and mean, you may be able to force it through and you know think you made it happen 
But what that baby really needs is that loving, nurturing energy that you need. So it's funny that what you're wanting to create for your baby or on other talks I've done, whatever, what your partner needs from you is what you need from you. So when you start thinking about that, this whole baby thing starts to open up into this whole big, beautiful realization and big, huge life change, not just adding a new responsibility to your life. It actually changes you, hopefully, in, in positive ways. But we just need to be aware of what's going on. So um, you're invited to take an active role in preparing your environment, not just giving it up to the doctors and the medicines and the procedures and make sure that you get this procedure as opposed to this, this procedure. Make sure you talk to this doctor so that it becomes all that. There's a big role that, that you need to play in creating the environment of love and peace and joy and happiness and playfulness and all those kind of things. And if you feel that, that that's too much of a struggle, then there's maybe there's some time to reevaluate your life a little bit. And this is a great opportunity. You know, well, I've got this job I got to do and I have these responsibilities. Well, creating a life is going to be your greatest um, uh, success in life. Besides the one where you created yourself, <laughs> that you're going to be involved in creating a new life. And that is going to be the most important thing. Stop thinking of it as a task or a problem to fix. That's the man way of doing it. It's the masculine way of doing things that we've got this problem. We're going to fix it. That's not how creation works. So there's something in here that is all tied in with the feminine energy and all tied in with how you feel about being a mother and how you feel about your mother. So uh, all this kind of brings up all, am I going to be a good mother? And I'm going to be a qualified mother. Am I going to know what to do when shit happens and, and when he or she gets sick and all that kind of stuff. When you um, heal and integrate any feelings of worthiness or not enough and that kind of thing that you actually move from being a people pleaser, taking care of everyone else, because this is not what having a baby is. It's not about you pouring into the baby everything that you got. It's really not about that. It's about you realizing your own uh, love and who you are, and that gets expressed to the baby. You can't be people pleaser, not really loving yourself, and pour all that into, pour all into what? Into the baby. That's not going to be this uh, authentic love that the baby really can feel. So the baby is a very feeling energy and the baby is going to be able to feel what you've got going on inside of you. And they'll like by osmosis start to take that on. So it's really got to be this authentic for once in my life, maybe I'm going to stop being a people pleaser and I'm going to fully take care of myself so that when my baby comes into me, that it feels that self-love. That's, that's the thing. So it's kind of a new uh, concept for a lot of people. Stop putting energy into deserving or not deserving. There is nothing that you can do in this world to make you deserving of a baby or life or not deserve. You've seen it all the time. You've seen people that go, oh my God, I can't believe this person has a baby. <laughs> so it's not a deserving thing. And I want to say something about like, um, baby, let's say a baby with that's born with cancer that happens or a baby that's born with a disability or not all of their limbs or something there's nothing about you know there's there's nothing about that baby that deserved that so get just just drop that whole idea that you somehow deserve to have a baby that deserves that or some weird thing like that just drop the whole deserving thing that is not even a part of this equation that's a separate thing that you'll need to work on separate from trying to have a baby. <clears throat> Stop relying so heavily on drugs and procedures. Um, you know, we've got many amazing medicine, but that all comes at a cost. And uh, that's a, there's a lot of stress in that. And I remember all the stress that was going on with the suppositories and medicines and all that stuff and no one talked about nutrition no one talked about not you know drinking at all or not or letting go of sugar and no one talked about any kind of nutrition thing and that's a that's a big part of it <clears throat> 
um, heal victim consciousness. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to us? We've got such a beautiful relationship. I love him or her so much. That stuff, it's also not a, really a part of the real of, of reality. It's just a part of our mind. And our mind is not reality. I hate to break it to you, but um, the whole why me thing is what the mind says. You are the one that is aware of the mind and you are open to love and you're expanding into every experience. And this is one of those experiences that the mind comes in and says, yeah, but so be aware of that, that the mind wants to kind of take this over and make it into something that it means something about you. It means nothing about you. Um, the thing about the husbands, what the husband can go into when the, when the wife is going through all this pain and suffering and new procedures and appointments and all this stuff, and she's trying to take care of her home and maybe she has a job too, or maybe she has other kids too. Um, the husband can start to feel um, that he's not um, appreciated, that he's not heard, that it's all about this dang baby, you know, and uh, I totally get that. And, um, and then the husband can feel like I'm not allowed to have these feelings, that it's very insensitive to think that I am, am more important than this baby. But there is a, a sliver of truth to that, that that's in the same way that the mother needs to take care of herself with self-love, the husband or the soon-to-be father needs to take care of himself too. That does not mean go out and have beers with the guys and take care of yourself that way. It means make yourself a clear channel for love and make sure that you're taking yourself physically and emotionally and that kind of thing. And yeah, you're going to do your best to take care of your, your wife's needs and take her to the appointments and do all those kind of things. But remember that with all those new duties that you have, there's a real responsibility to take care of yourself because it doesn't do anyone any good if you're out here wondering, you know, where you're going to end up in all of this. So you, you have full permission to have a conversation and talk about, you know, I'm totally... 100% in, and I'm so excited, but I know that both of us need to talk about that what we need besides the baby, that our relationship is actually the most important thing, at least one of the most important things. <clears throat> Heal the people pleaser or the close to receiving uh, energy. This people pleaser thing is that I don't know what my needs are, what my boundaries are, and I'm out there helping everyone else that definitely needs to be healed because what that that whole stream of thought is, I'm not worthy of getting what I need. And so I'm going to give to everyone else. In fact, I don't know what my needs are. And I'm trying to have a baby. <laughs> it just doesn't fit. It's like you're closed off from receiving love and whatever to you. And you're asking someone, the doctor, God, whoever, to fix this, to, to make this happen. You have to be completely into completely receiving all of it, not just the good stuff, but you are completely receiving life. And this whole journey is all a part of it because this whole journey is causing you hopefully to become even more intimate with your partner and exploring and opening things up that are possibly in the way of you um, expressing love to your new baby and to be you know, a great parent. So all that stuff kind of comes up in the right time. Um, I want to talk about um, this, this book. I didn't see this. Yeah. It's called Telos. Anyway, um, it's three volumes and it's, it's a channeled story, channeled message could be real, could not be real, but um, it feels really real. And one of the things that they talk about in there is um, there is this um, society, um, uh, what's the word, land. Um, you're going you're gonna to help me on this, I'm sure. Anyway, a group of people, it's called Telos. It's a um, country, land, society. And when they talk about having children, um, this, the prospective parents who have chosen to change their life, and they, they can live hundreds, if not a thousand years, if they want to, 
And when they decide that they want to change their life and become the, the go into the parenting role, it's a huge deal. And they they go through this long training period with all the elders and the wisdom keepers and you know the whole society works with them to become the most evolved, enlightened parents so that that child is stepping into something magnificent. There's no like, oops, got pregnant kind of thing, which is, you know, there's no judgment about that. But the way that their society works is that everything is planned and organized in the most sacred way. And uh, that's what I'm inviting in is more sacredness, more uh, joyful celebration and envisioning and um, seeing what the, the future might hold and, you know, that kind of thing, just kind of when you start getting into what, what the feelings are going to be had in that new experience, you start attracting more of that. So if we're in the fearful things about, oh my gosh, I hope this doesn't happen. That's us putting energy into that. So what we want to do is put energy into how we want to feel. And a lot of times that uh, what we want to feel is what we want to feel outside of having a baby. So if you want to feel desired or needed or um, appreciated, that's something that you can work on even before you have the baby, because the baby is going to hopefully, you know, kind of bring that up, but you really want to work on that before that. Uh, heal any mother energy about uh, how you feel about being a mother, a qualified, capable mother or father. Um, and also how you feel about your own mother, if you have any disagreements about how they mothered or um, if there's anything that you can heal in that relationship really helps you um, in your subconscious being a mother. Um, something is happening in all this that I'm talking about, and it's kind of like if you can think about it, that, you know, when uh, when a soldier is marching and they and then the call is, is called out uh, mark time they're marching in place and they're not going forward they're not going backward they're just marching in this this pace right here and that's kind of what you can think about this as is that um, you're working on yourself just marking time marking time and then when you clear whatever you can clear now you start marching forward into this next thing uh use this as an, uh, as an opportunity um the soul of the baby knows the best time and, you know, some of the stuff I can't prove, but God, it sure does feel right. It feels like more like a reality where the, the soul is saying, okay, I have a, I can see what the experience is going to become. And it's going to be right in alignment with the theme that I need to experience. But in order to start this off in the best possible way, I need to go into the womb of creation in the best possible way with the most love, with the most support. And if it feels like it's not quite right yet, maybe the planets aren't aligned. It has to be, maybe it has to come in on November 25th. Maybe it has to come in as a Scorpio. And it, whoops, it came in as a Sagittarius. So, you know, maybe it backs off. Or there's another story that, you know, uh, a soul goes through all this training um, to ex get ready to experience what it feels like to have the illusion of separation from God. And the story is that it goes through all this training and then uh, it goes into the physical reality and says, holy shit, this is not what I was expecting. And it backs out. And then, you know, someone experiences a miscarriage and then it goes back through the training and says, okay, I just need more training in this and I'll be good. Goes through the training, goes back to the physical realm of this feeling of separation and says, I can't handle this. I, I can't do it. And so it backs out again. So that's something that's kind of there's I don't know if anyone that could ever prove this, but God, it sure kind of opens it opens me up to realizing that there's a lot more going on than I think. Um, there was a woman that I was working with that she had a long time uh, frustration and guilt that she didn't have a vaginal birth when she when her son was born. But what came out of the whole session was that her son needed to come through that part of her body. Um, I think it was like the second chakra instead of the first chakra. And for some reason, that's what needed to happen. So she was frustrated and kind of shame and guilt that it didn't come out, you know, quote, naturally. But it came out the way that it needed to come out. 
Um, speak to the soul of the baby that has passed. So if you've had a miscarriage, you can talk to the soul of that of that person, of that, um, of that baby. And uh, a lot of women find a lot of healing with that, that that, you know, because there's this uh, feeling like I created, uh, this woman said the other day, I created life and then I just, then I killed it. And that's a lot of burden to carry. And when you know that the soul never was born and never died, the only thing that happened that the, the egg, the container was not viable. So, but the soul still carried on and still, and it went back to whenever it was doing. So if you think of it that way, it really kind of eases the burden that you did this and then you did that. It's really not that you are, you don't have that much power. It's, it's really not you doing that. Um, also speak to the soul of uh, what will be your child or who will be your child. You know, we're here for you. We love you. We're so excited. What can we do? You know, um, go into meditation and ask that soul of the child, what can we do? How can I, how can I work, work on myself? What can I clear out that you're already poised to work on as a human being when you get here? What can I clear out of that, that you don't have to work on it? <laughs> what relationship between mother and child can I heal and integrate that I have with my mother so that you don't have that burden. It's, so it's that kind of thing. And when you go into meditation, sometimes that stuff gets really clear and it just, it comes in how it needs to come in. And that's how, as an epiphany and not really as a thought, but as a realization. So spend some time in that and you'll be able to connect them with the soul of that being that's coming in. Um, this whole thing is kind of, is you using your inner resources. And I don't mean to kind of put all the focus on the the mother, the soon to be mother, because the the father has a big role in this too. He's he's the role of the protector and security and that kind of thing. If there isn't that um, that influence in your life, then there's some other work to be done around how to how to support that. I just can't go into all of that on this one little call, this one little video. Um, the other thing is. Uh, God's role in all of this. Um, there in the conversation I had uh, with this woman and her husband, um, there was this feeling that uh, God was out here and I'm having the experience and why is, why is God doing this and that kind of thing. I invite you to come out of God is doing this and I'm having to suffer with this or God is taking this away or anything like that. God is in this, not just in this, but as this. So what I want to invite you to do is expand your idea of God, that God is just a persona or a being or a divine being. I invite you to expand that it is your body, your thoughts, the environment, the soul, all of it, there is nothing but God in all that. So you're not alone in all this. You're not having this experience frustrated at God. God is also in the experience as the experience. That should, you know, if you can really kind of meditate on that and allow yourself to just back off from the mind, you know, instead of the I know buts, just allow yourself to wonder if that were to be true, not to think about it, but just say, wow, is God in this whole experience? Not God, the person knows the experience, but God is the experiencer of the experience of God. Um, the other thing, so one last thing I want to invite you to do um, is experience a womb healing with my wife, Valerie. So, uh, of course, I've never experienced this myself, but from what I hear from her clients, it can be a real life-changing experience. And from what I know about it, it's a combination of sound healing therapy, breath work, ancestral healing, ritual, energetic release, and all these things. And the idea is that when women have sex with men, um, that energy goes into them. And uh, there's, a, there's a theory that that energy from that intercourse stays with that woman 
for a number of years. And so um, think about like your ancestors, your, your mother, grandmother, great grandmother, great great grandmother, all have this uh, opportunity to heal their energy from you know that lineage. And you can heal that, you can release that energy. And you know, who knew you could actually do something like this, but it happens and people and women have this amazing release of energy and um, it must feel like a, a, like a clearing ready to renew and, and create new life in that. It's like uh, uh, cleaning off the, for lack of a better word, cleaning out the oven before you go bake something, you know? So um, it's about a three hour experience and totally worth it. So um, you can get a hold of uh, my wife at Valerie Irons irons.com or ohmbasesedona.com a-u-m-b-a-s-e sedona.com um, I really hope this helps hope I didn't uh, trigger anyone too bad but my purpose is to just open up to more to love and realize that we have a big part in this in the physical and then also not that much part of it in this kind of weird dichotomy so I hope that um, that helped things out. All right. Bless you. Thank you. And I love you.